Hello, my name is Pablo Stanley, and this is the first video on a crash course on Figma's Auto Layout. We'll do a deep dive into how Auto Layout works with different examples like a UI card, a nav bar, a table, and other stuff like that. But what is Auto Layout? Well, Auto Layout is a feature from Figma that lets you create dynamic components that react to their content. You can create buttons, inputs, tables, cards, but how do you make them respond automatically when the content changes or when the size changes? Well, with Auto Layout, you can make responsive elements that can also be reordered automatically really easily. Then if you combine these responsive components, you can create full templates that work across different devices and different screens. So let's learn how to create flexible designs with Auto Layout. Okay, so here are the things that we're going to be learning in this introduction to Auto Layout. And just to keep things simple, I'm going to start just by using some simple shapes. We're going to get into more complex and real examples in other video lessons. So the first thing is just like adding Auto Layout. How do you add Auto Layout to something? Well, you add more than one object. For example, here I select these two objects, uh, just this rectangle and circle. And then here you're going to see an option to add an auto layout. So you just press that and then it added an auto layout. Another way to do this is just by selecting them and then pressing Shift A. By pressing Shift A, A for auto layout, it turned this into a frame and also added auto layout. Now, if this had already been a frame, for example, Command option G and now it's a frame. You can also add auto layout to a frame that already exists. So this frame, I can add auto layout to it. Okay, so now that I have auto layout, there are some other options that I have. Since this is a frame too, I can add styling to it. So I can actually add a white background to it. So let's add a white background and I can even add corner radius around it. I can add corner radius. You can see that it's changing here. Let's keep it at eight pixels. Something cool about Auto Layout is that the elements inside it, you can move the elements inside it. So you can say like, hey, I actually want this on the left or change your mind and say, no, I actually want Obi-Wan on the right. Now, another thing that is cool about Auto Layout is that you can add other elements inside it. So for example, Nick Cage appears in the picture and then you can actually draw elements inside an existing Auto Layout and then it will adapt to the spacing around it. And just talking about spacing, let's actually change the spacing between these elements and also change the direction. Right now, the direction of it, you can see here on the auto layout options that it's aligned in a horizontal direction, but you can then change it to a vertical direction or you can keep it horizontal. That's pretty neat. And also you can change the spacing between them in this input. So I can say, hey, you know what? I actually want it to be 16 pixels. I can want it to be 24 and you can just play around with that. Also, you can play with the padding, the padding of this frame that is right now it's zero. So everything is just like close to the edges. You can also change that padding. So I, for example, I can say it's 24 pixels in padding. So now you can see that it has 24 padding around it. And sometimes just that regular padding is enough, just like 24 pixels all the way around. But sometimes you want individual padding. You want, you want the padding on the sides to be different to the padding on the top and bottom. So you can just click here and then you have these options to just change the padding of actually every side. So you can say like, hey, you know what? I actually want it tighter on the top. I want it tighter on the bottom and I want more spacing on the left and maybe more spacing on the right too. Maybe just a little bit tighter. So you have that kind of control here. Also, you're going to see that we have these controls here. This allow you to change the alignment of how things are aligned. Right now, by default, it aligns everything to the top left. So that's why this circle, even if it's a small, it's always aligned to the top. But if I want to, I can change that alignment. I can say like, you know what? I actually want it to be aligned to the center, aligned to the bottom, aligned to the center center, and like this. Now, when I click on these, it looks like nothing is happening, right? Like, A, these are all just keeping the elements the same when they're all just aligned to the bottom. And that's because right now, the size of this container 
it's just like hugging the content. So you don't see a lot of difference, but you start seeing the difference when you make the size of the container a little bit bigger. So let's say that this container is a little bit bigger. Now if I align it over here, now you can see that the elements align to the right or also to the center, center, center top, to the top right, and so on. Let's align it all the way to the center on the left again. Now, now that it's here, I also sometimes I want to distribute the spacing between these elements across the width of this container. So right now the spacing between them is fixed at 24. You know, it's just like this. But sometimes I actually want it to be uh, the spacing between them to fill the container. So to do that, you can go over here and say instead of being packed, you can say space between, or you can also just type in auto here. Before it was 24, and now you can just say auto, and it will do the same thing. It will just try to adjust the spacing between the elements according to the width of this. So see how it's always changing the spacing between them. And it's just trying to put the elements all across the width of the container. Now, another thing that is pretty cool about auto layout is the resizing options. By default, it just like remains, all the elements are remain at the fixed width. So right now, if I change this, you know, this square keeps looking like a square. The circle looks like the same size. And this one is just like not changing its size. It's just like remaining the same size, right? But sometimes you actually want the size of the elements to actually change according to the size of the container. So you can actually change that by saying like, for example, this one, I actually want the height of it to be adjusting to the size of the container. So I can say, A, instead of a fixed height, I want to fill the container. <laughs> Look at that, it's, it's stretching the crazy face of Nicolas Cage. I think it's very, <laughs> that's very good. Sorry, I'm actually laughing about this. Uh, you can also do the same with the width. Instead of a fixed width, you can say, hey, I actually want to fill the container. Oh, okay, now it's starting to look, a little bit less crazy, I don't know. <laughs> but you can also say fix width and if you want to just like adjust the width of this. Now, something weird is happening here and that's because the spacing, it went back to packed, but I can also go back to say space between. Sometimes that happens when you start changing the elements inside, uh, some other stuff will change. So just, so just make sure that that doesn't happen. By the way, you can also do that same with all of these. For example, this one, I actually wanted to be fill the container too. And since, since it's filling the container of the width is pushing this element to the side and it's just uh, pushing everything because it's trying to fill the width of the container. So if I were to resize, see how the face of Paul Rudd is just resizing on the width of it. And if I resize on the height, it's not resizing its size, the height. The height is remaining the same. The only thing that is resizing is the width. Now, another thing that you can do is you can actually nest auto layouts. So you can have an auto layout inside another auto layout. So let's say that I have another Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, but I want these two to be actually aligned top and bottom. So I can actually select these two and I can say shift A. So create another auto layer with all of these and change the direction. See, now this is one auto layout inside this other auto layout. So you can imagine all the cool things that you can do that. And this one has its own padding. So I can change the padding between them. I can also even add padding around it and even add its own background color. So if I want it to be a great background, its own corner radius, see how things are starting to get a little bit more complex, but also it just gives you this so much control over every element. And the cool thing is that once I resize this, the elements around it actually adjust to the size of it because everything is responding and everything is inside an auto layout. Now, one of the coolest things is that this works with text too. So let's say that you add uh, a text label. So for example, hello there, hello there. And you add this one over here. See, it's uh, adjusting this, but if I wanted to add more text, see how the text is pushing the content. So auto layout responds to the size of the text fields too. And that's pretty cool, pretty cool. 
So yeah, that's a pretty much the basic, but I'm sure that you are like, Pablo, this is not very rational. Not all of these are, I'm not going to be using <laughs> faces of Paul Rudd and Obi-Wan Kenobi in my UIs. Don't worry, on the other lessons, we're actually going to get into more real use cases. This is just an introduction, just to get you to know how Auto Layout works. So keep watching the other videos and hopefully we learn together. Thank you.